Hello and welcome to Easy Tech Time. So today in this video we will be creating a 3D model that can be used for 3D printing. The thing that we will be creating is a quick release plate for my tripod. You can see that behind me there. If you want the exact model number you can check it in the description. And the quick release plate is just one of these. And you can see it has the screw for the camera in the middle here. And there's this little pin to lock it so it can't rotate. So the first thing we need to consider is if our object can be 3D printed at all. And if we take a look at this object, it is almost the perfect thing to 3D print actually. Because the printer will start from the bottom and print one thin layer at a time building it up as we go. So you can imagine something like this cover for an iPhone would be pretty difficult to print because this part here is hanging in free air. It can actually still be printed because when the slicing software is making the print ready it can fill in what is called support material and that will just put a very weak structure in underneath here so it has something to build this on top of and that can be broken off when the print is finished. But it will still be visible afterwards so you can't use it where there is a lot of detail or something that you want to be pretty. As long as we have a good angle here it can just print on top so for this we won't need any support. I only have one of these and if I have to switch camera I have to screw this off the camera and screw it onto the second camera and that takes a lot of time so it could be much easier if I had two of these and I can't seem to find them anywhere so we'll print one. So let's get started and in this video we will only do the modeling of the object and I will make a second video where we can do the print. And just remember the shape of this object because I will be doing a few measurements while we are creating it. And just a quick disclaimer, this is the first object that I have made in Blender. And I am just redoing an updated version in this video. The way that I do things may not be the best way to do them and there might be some shortcuts that I don't know about. And I will also mention in the video when there is things that I think could be done in a better way. So I just switched to a screen capture so you can better follow me on the screen. And the program we're going to use for this object will be Blender. It is a free program and you can download it from their website blender.org and you just press this blender 2.71 over here and if you're watching this video in the future it might be a newer version. Once you got that installed and you open blender you will see this screen here and you will also see this every time you create a new project. So they create this little cube for you and you don't always need that so in most cases you will delete it. But we will use that to kind of get an idea how the basic navigation works in this program. So if you hold down your mouse wheel or the middle mouse button, you can rotate the view and kind of get the angle that you want. If you hold shift down while you're doing that, you can pan the view. But in some cases you kind of want to get a fixed view at it from say one of the sides or from the top. And you can use the keys on the numpad for that. If you press the key 1 on the numpad, you will view everything from the Y direction. If you press C, you get the X, and 7 will get you the C, or view it from the top. If you want to view it from the other three angles, say the bottom and the minus side of the other axes, you can hold down Control and then press the key. So now we're viewing it from the top. If I hold down Control and press 7, we will view it from the bottom. And another thing that you will 
sometimes find handy is to press the 5 key. This will switch between a perspective view and an isometric view. You can see this object is selected because it has this yellow edge around it. If you want to deselect it, you can press A. That will deselect everything. But if you press A again, it will select everything. If you want to select a single object, hold your mouse over that object and press the right mouse button. So we don't need this cube for the object that we are going to build. So delete that by pressing the delete key. And I guess this is the most basic navigations that you will need and we will take the rest as we go. So to create this object, we will need a plane. And we will put this plane in the X, Y direction. So we will view it from the top by pressing the seven key on the numpad. To create the object, go to this create menu in the top left corner and press plane. And this will create you a plane and you can put in some parameters in this box that appeared down in the bottom. Note that Blender works in radii when you're creating objects, at least out of the box it does. I, I believe you can get some plugins to change that. But this means if you set the radius to five millimeters, it will actually make a plane that is 10 by 10 millimeters or one by one centimeter. And you also want to Put in the location where you want the plane and also the rotation. I just make this plane one by one centimeter so we can scale it later on. And to do that we'll go to this where it says object mode and we will select edit mode. This allows us to edit the object that we just created. By pressing tools and scale we can scale the object. If you press once you can scale it with a mouse, but that is not very precise. So we want to press it again or just double click scale. This will bring up this menu where you can scale it in all three directions. I went ahead and measured the physical object with my pair of calibers. And it turns out the X direction is five centimeters. And we already have the plane at one by one centimeter. So we want to scale it by five. The Y direction is 5.5 centimeter and the C direction will just leave where it is. And we will also need to create a circle. And if we do that while we are in edit mode, we will make it part of the same object. So create a circle. And the number of vertices is 32. This means that it is not a perfect circle. It is a polygon with 32 edges, but that will be just fine for what we are creating. The radius, we want this to be 25 millimeters. And the position, we don't want to change the X position, but the Y position will have to move it up here. And since this is five and a half centimeter, We'll have 2.75 from here to here. Oops. And that is 27.5. That's more like it. So now we want to deselect everything by pressing A. And we want to combine these two shapes. And you can see this is gray and this is transparent. And that's because there's a face on this object or this shape, I should say, because it's the same object. And there is not a face on this shape. So to select the square, we will have to click this little button down here, where you can switch between selecting vertices, edges, or faces. And we want to select the face, and we want to delete that, and press only faces. So now that's gone. We also don't want this line here, so we will select line, select the line, delete it, and say itch. And we also want to select some vertices and delete those. You can press the B button to draw a selection box.
and we just delete the vertices and I forgot one there. So now you can see this looks like the basic shape of what we want. But if you select this vertice, you can see there's only a yellow line on the top part. Whereas you select this one, there's a yellow line on both sides. This means that this vertice, I can zoom in on that. It means that this vertice is only connected to this line here. And we want this object to be made solid, so we want to connect these two parts. And I guess there is a clever way to do that, but as I said, I am very new to this program, so I haven't figured everything out yet. But what you can do is to zoom in very close, like this, and then view it from one side, and select the vertice, and then view it from the other side, hold down shift, and you can select it again, and that will select the other vertice. And I am sure there is a shortcut to select both at the same time, just haven't found it yet. Once you have done that, you go and click Tools, and there will be a button down here that says Merge. And select Add Center. And now if you deselect it and select it again, you can see it is connected to both edges. We want to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And if we go ahead and rotate this object, you can see it is just a two-dimensional wireframe. And we wanted to make it a three-dimensional object. So you want to go ahead and select all the vertices. Make sure the vertices are selected down here and press A. And now go ahead and view it from one of the sides. We can now extrude these by pressing the E button on the keyboard. You can do this with your mouse, or you can press X, Y, or C to lock them to one direction. So we want to lock these to the C direction. And now you can see it only moves in that direction. But again, using the mouse is not very precise, so we want to take our pair of calibers and measure the height on the physical object and that is 8 millimeters. I want to make this object top side down, so I will put in minus 8 and press inside. Press A to deselect, and if you now move your mouse around, you can see we have a at least an edge in three dimensions. So we will leave this for now and start creating the top part because we need to attach that to this object. You can make this as a separate object if you want, but by staying in edit mode, we will make sure it is part of the same object. Go to create, and we want to create a new plane. We set the radius to five millimeters, making it one by one square and start by setting the location to 0, 0, and 0. Now go to Tools, Scale, and we go ahead and measure the object. The X direction is 32.5 mm. So we set that to 3.25. And the Y direction this is actually a tapered edge, so we will make the bottom one first. And we will measure that as good as we can. And that is 46.5 mm. And we'll leave the C. Since this is not overlapping with anything else, it created a face on it, and we want to go ahead and delete that. Select face, select object, delete, faces only. 
Now we select vertices and we select these four vertices. We can press E to extrude. And we again we want to lock these to the C direction. And we go ahead and measure the object. And now this is the height from the base plate to the top of the thing or the bottom it is actually. And to me that looks like it is 8.25 millimeters. And you can see by extruding the first object negative and the second object positive, these actually line up exactly where we want them to. We just have to move it a little bit up in the y direction, but we will do that later. Now we want to go ahead and scale these four vertices by pressing scale twice. And we want to scale in the y direction to make the taper. And you probably want to pull out the calculator to calculate this because you will have to put it in as a, a scalar. So what we are going to do is measuring the top of the taper and dividing it by the bottom. And that gives me a number of 1. 0.11 and as you can see it's starting to look more like the thing and if we go ahead and view this from the top you can see this perspective mode won't do us any good so by pressing 5 on the keypad you can switch to the isometric and I can measure on my object that we want this space between these two lines to be one centimeter. So we want to select these four vertices as well. And to move it, we want to press the translate button twice and move it up 8 millimeters in the y direction. And that looks about right to me. So now we want to make the inside of this top piece. We deselect everything. We create a plane. Radius of 5 millimeters and the location 0, 0, 0. Or actually we can set the C to 8.25. That was the height of the other object that we created and we actually want it to be there. And we can just rotate and check that it is in the correct position. We go to tools and scale and we want to measure the physical object again. The x direction is actually 28 millimeters, but I can see I can go ahead and make it a little bit smaller so the walls can be a little bit thicker. It is a 3D print and not a casted object that we are going to make, so we don't want the walls to be too thin. So I can see that 25 millimeters will be a good value. Or perhaps we should go with 2.3. And by the way, remember to save your project. I forgot that. And in the Y direction, we want to make it 35 millimeters. We want to go ahead and move it up by 8 millimeters. And again, delete this top face. Select these four vertices. Press E to extrude in the C direction. 
and type in minus say seven and a half millimeter. That makes it so it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of this. I don't know, we just have to make sure that the screw for the tripod can fit in here. But we want as much material in here as possible. So I know that this doesn't look like much, but we are actually almost done. We want to go ahead and deselect everything, create a new object and a circle because we want to make the hole in the middle for the screw. And the radius of that hole should be 3.5 millimeters, making the diameter 7 millimeters. We want to place it in 0, 0, and 8.25. But actually we moved this other piece up by eight millimeters and we want this one to be in the center of that. So we can just move it to eight. And that should do. We then want to go ahead and press E to extrude downwards in the C direction. And how much is this? Well, the first one here is eight millimeters and this is 8.25, so we go minus 16.25 and it looks about right. On most cameras there's this locking pin next to the screw for the tripod. So we want to go ahead and make a hole for that as well. A circle, 0, 8, 8.25 and the radius is two millimeters. Now I just measure the distance from the center of these two holes on the physical object, and that is 1.4 centimeters, or 14 millimeters. So we want to put this to minus six. And that looks like it is just inside of this. So I don't know if you realize, but I actually made a mistake on this other hole here because this top one here is going to be hollow. So we want the hole to end at this line down here. So we want to correct this before we make the other hole. And instead of 8.25, that must be 0 0.75. And that looks about right. And we want to deselect everything and draw a selection with B, select these vertices and we want to translate and the C direction we go minus 7.5 and we can select a wire mesh instead of the solids here or wire frame it's called and we can just check that the a line and it looks like it. So we want to select these again and we want to extrude them in the C direction and now it is starting to get a little bit tricky because it is these 8 millimeters plus these 0 0.75 so minus 8.75 in the C direction and it looks about right to me. And we can select the solids again. And now we just have to make a few faces and we're actually done. So let's start with the easy one first and that would be this top one. So great, the first face we will select these four vertices. And it is very easy to create a face, you just press F deselect and select the next four
And I am pretty sure there's an easier way to do this also, but again, I'm not an expert in this program yet. And this one down here is also pretty easy. For the first, we can select this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And for this front one, we just select all the rest of these vertices. and press F. And this inside one gets a little bit more tricky, but it is kind of the same thing. And as you can see, this 3D model is now completed. It is not ready for print yet though, because a 3D printer doesn't like all these faces that has been divided into multiple faces. That can create unwanted holes and stuff in your print if it doesn't get fixed. But we want to go ahead and save this file. and export it as an STL. And let's just call it the model number of the tripod. That is VCTRC, no, not C, 620. And export STL. Now we want to go ahead and download a program called NetFab. You just go to download and select NetFab Basic. We're on a Windows machine and download for PC 32 bits. Once you open NetFab, you want to go ahead and select Projects and Open. And we go ahead and select our file. And here you can see what I was talking about before. All the red parts is errors. And it is actually not that bad because it is an automatic fix. You just press this little repair button. And you can just choose automatic repair, default repair, execute, and apply repair and just remove old part. And I think I said the red part was the error, but uh, I'm not sure because now it's all red. <laughs> but anyway, this will fix the problem. Now you wanna go to part and export part as STL and just call it whatever you want. 
So now that we created our repaired file, we can open MakeAware or whatever program you choose to use. Go to File, Open, and select Repaired File. You can choose to move it to Platform, because remember I made the origin in the middle of the object. Just like this. And to view what the print would look like, we can go to File, Export, Preview Before Printing, and just disable the raft. We don't need that. We'll just leave the rest of the settings for this demonstration. And here we have the object. And when you're printing objects that you created yourself, you always want to check this because if we haven't repaired it in NetFab, there would have been some holes uh, in this side here and some of these would be missing. And I'm sure there is a better technique to create the objects, but again, I'm not a professional, so go check out some of the more professional videos if you want to learn about that. We can just check how the internal layers look. And this is only 10% infill, so we would definitely increase that when we have to print it, but it looks just fine so far. And it doesn't look like our edge here got too thin. That was what I was worried about in the beginning of the video, but also you might remember I corrected this thickness here, but it looks perfect and we just have to print one of them. So if you want to see this object gets printed, check out the next video. But uh, I guess you won't leave without actually seeing the object. So I have already printed it and it is right here. You can see we have our two holes here, the taper, and it looks pretty much like this one. And if I kind of place them on top of each other, you can see the only thing that we didn't make is this rounded edge on the front of the plate here. And who cares really? It works and that is good enough for me. And we will just do a live test fit on camera. just like a bought one. The only thing that is needed, of course, is a quarter inch screw to fit in the camera, but I don't have one, so I will have to pick one up. Thanks for watching this video, and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos as well. Remember to check out the next one where I print this, and I will see you.